we all want to reduce our chances of having dementia or getting Alzheimer's disease. Do you know that there are certain medications and drugs that you absolutely should be very careful with, especially if you are over the age of 50? And we're going to go over those now. I'm not going to go deep into the science because this is just going to be a really quick and concise guide to help you keep the most healthy brain as possible. And let me just say, omega-3, like your fish oils, ask your doctor if it's right for you because that is so protective to the brain and your mental health. So if you're not doing omega-3s, flax oil or fish oil, talk to your doctor because with my patients, that is the number one thing that I'll go over. Okay. So these are the drugs called anticholinergics. Yeah, I know it's a funny name, but hey, have you ever used a Benadryl? Yeah, that falls in the category of it's an antihistamine, but it's also an anticholinergic. And why do I mention Benadryl? Well, I think because most of us in our lifetime have taken a Benadryl at least once. But let's go over all the ones really quickly, the drugs to avoid, especially in older adults. And why? Well, let me go over some of the side effects. One, if used frequently, so you use it several times a week for months and years, yeah, you are very much at risk for having memory loss, brain fog, possibly even full-on dementia. And the other side effects would be uh, what's called anticholinergic syndrome. So if you take uh, a lot of meds that fall into this, and I'll go over them, you can actually get a life-threatening condition called that anticholinergic syndrome. And so... For example, do you have chronic allergies? Do you have bladder issues? Uh, Do you have uh, low heart rate? Do you have irritable bowel syndrome? Most likely, you have been told to take an anticholinergic drug. And again, I'm going to go over the names of them in a second. The side effects of taking those medications can be um, trouble urinating, like holding on to urine, Um, visual and neurological disturbances like I talked about, dry mouth, uh, tachycardia or high heart rate, and of course, sore throat. So gosh, what are these? To me, it's more important because I need to have a sharp, focused brain and I plan on having one well until I'm in my hundreds. (laughs) That's my goal. But uh, well, let's just go through them. So if you've ever been on an antidepressant, so but there's a specific antidepressant. So those would be your Elevil, which is amitriptyline, Maybe I won't mention brand names, right? Because I don't need big pharma coming after me. So let's just do the generics. Amitriptyline, uh, doxepine, nortriptyline, uh, things like that, right? And then you have your anti-nausea, anti-vomiting meds, right? So you have uh, prochlorperazine, also known as compazine, and then your promethazine, also known as phenergan, okay? Now antihistamines. Listen, I love Benadryl. I love antihistamines because I do suffer from allergies. And sometimes if I can't sleep, I know a Benadryl will help me sleep. And, but I'm very careful to not take it every day. If I, and and, you know, Benadryl, there's been studies how it can be antiviral as well. That's a whole separate video. But sometimes when I'm a little sick, I'll take a Benadryl because it helps me go to sleep. I'm not saying for you to do that, but I'm just saying I love Benadryl, but I know I have to be careful with it. If my plan is not to take it every night, I know there are some people that are taking these over-the-counter medications that also have Benadryl in them, which is great because it makes you drowsy, makes you fall asleep. In the very short term, I think that's perfectly safe, but I bet there's people out there that are taking it every night now, and that is something you need to be aware of as far as it is going to affect your brain health. So uh, our other antihistamines, we have, uh, you you guys aren't going to maybe know the generics. I might have to say the brand nil. So we have Unisom, uh, we have Chlortrimeton, Dimetap, things like that, Atarax, Visteril, and of course, Benadryl. Now, no shade to them. We need these medications. Like I said, if I had to pick my top 10 medications, I... Believe me, Benadryl is in my top 10, right? I always have it in the house, but I don't take it every day, right? Okay, so then our people with Parkinson's, uh, Cogentin and Artane or Parkin, uh, those are ones, antipsychotics like 
Zyprexia, Thorazine, Melaril, things like that. And again, uh, you know, there's even a study that came out on Prozac that if used consistently for more than eight years can lead to some side effects in how your brain functions and I'll say dementia. But again, some of these drugs I know are life saving, but you have to find a healthy balance right? But isn't it good just to be aware? I'm just educating you on what drugs are anticholinergic and being on them long-term we know does affect the brain, okay? So there is this little molecule or this little, uh, neuro, uh, I'll call it a neurotransmitter, acetylcholine, right? It's in our brain. So if you think about one cell and another cell, they need to communicate with each other. So acetylcholine can go from this cell to this cell, carry a message, carry some important memories or thoughts or whatnot. And when you take an anticholinergic, it's literally um, decreasing the amount of uh, acetylcholine, like how that will work in the brain, explaining it super simply. Okay. So then we go to our um, inhalers, which are very important, like Atrovent and Spireva. Again, I know they're life-saving. They're also anticholinergics. Some GI medications, I know there's a lot of people with IBS, Crohn's, diverticulitis, diverticulosis that are on Bentil. And Bentil can be a great medication for controlling digestive issues, but you need to know it's also an anticholinergic. So I always think it's a really good idea to get as healthy as you can, get your diverticulosis under control, avoiding the popcorn and the seeds and the alcohol and the things that you know trigger, trigger your... GI disturbances, so you can slowly get off Bentil, uh, or can you can talk to your doctor like, what can I do to get off Bentil, right? Um, but some of you might not be able to get off Bentil, so if you're going to be taking Bentil, right, wouldn't it be smart to maybe not be also taking Benadryl, not also be taking something else that you don't absolutely need, right? Because remember, I talked about the cumulative effect of being on a lot of these medications every day can lead to this syndrome, which is life-threatening. Okay. Uh, other GI medications, yeah, Levsin, um, Librax, Cymax, Pamine, all those. And then our skeletal muscle relaxants. Again, I've used these before. I've prescribed these before, like Flexeril. I think Flexeril can be really helpful. Like when you slip a disc or you have a back injury and you are bedridden and suffering because... Face it, most doctors now, including myself, we're all afraid of prescribing opioids because the DEA is coming after us, even though we're just trying to treat our patients. But everyone is practicing medicine now, insurance companies, pharmacists, and the DEA. It's a crazy time in the medical world right now. But Flexeril can be very helpful. However, bad news, it's an anticholinergic. And so it's not meant to be used long term. Okay. And then your urinary medications. I mean, those of us over 50, we have bladder issues. And so um, a lot of people, women and men, may be on Ditropan, Vesicare, Detrol, Enablix, Norpermin, like all those urologic medications are also anticholinergics, right? Because the side effect of anticholinergic medications is urinary retention. Yeah. Well, that's why those work for the urinary system, right? So... I hope that is something helpful, a piece of information if you're on these medications that you can bring to your doctor. Talk to your doctor like, do I really need to be taking these? Can I maybe um, go to a lower dose? Or if you're wondering why you're having the side effects like urinary retention, memory issues, or are you taking at least three of these all at the same time? The risk long term, it may be taking a toll on your brain. Yeah. And that's why it's so important to stay active, eat right, eat whole foods, get your omega-3s, right? Okay. Hope this was helpful.